Hey guys, welcome to the Command Valley. I'm your host Landon, super happy to have you here. Today's episode will be a deck tech on one of the commanders from the Commander 2020 precons. Before we get into the deck, I'd like to give a huge shout out to the channel sponsor, Game Grid Lehigh. If you're in the Utah County area, you need to check out their store. They've got an amazing card archive, huge selection for card and deck accessories, and an incredibly helpful and friendly staff. If you're not in the Utah County area, we're going to have a link to their website in the show notes. Additionally, if you haven't yet, we'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our weekly deck techs, monthly gameplay videos, and our set reviews. We appreciate all the support. Now, on to the deck. Today's deck will be on Akeem the Soaring Wind. Akeem the Soaring Wind is a legendary creature bird dinosaur that costs 2, a blue, a red, and a white. He has flying and has, whenever you create one or more tokens for the first time each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white bird creature token with flying. He also has an activated ability that says 3, a blue, a red, and a white. Creature tokens you control gain double strike until end of turn. So Akeem doesn't make you tokens on his own, but does increase the amount of tokens you make. In all honesty, I was a little underwhelmed by this one, but I've actually really warmed up to this dino bird and brewed up a super sweet deck. So what's the focus on this deck? How are we planning on reducing our opponent's life total to zero before they kill us? Well, we're going to be laying heavily into that token making strategy. We're trying to pump out as many tokens as fast as possible, pump them up, and swing in for lethal. I'm trying to stay relatively budget. I'm limiting most of the cards in the deck to at least $5, but I will be including suggestions over that budget throughout and at the end of the video. To start the deck off, let's go over the ramp package. Not having access to green means we're relying heavily on mana rocks. We're playing all three signets in our colors with Izzet, Boros, and Azorius. Each of these costs two mana, enter the battlefield untapped, and have an activated ability that we pay one mana into and we get two mana out. We're then playing the three talismans with Talisman of Conviction, Curiosity, and Progress. Each of them, for two mana, come to play untapped, can tap for a colorless, or we can pay a life to generate some color. We're then going to be playing Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Wayfarer's Bauble, and Battle Him, which is awesome with the right board state. Now, let's go over the ways in this deck that we have of making tokens. This isn't all of them, I will be including a couple more in a later category. We're playing a bunch of cards that reward us for casting instants and sorceries and non-creature spells by giving us tokens. We're playing Kaikar Wind's Fury, which every time we cast a non-creature spell, we're going to make a 1-1 spirit, and we can also sacrifice those spirits to add red to our mana pool. We're then playing Young Pyromancer, Murmuring Mystic, Docent of Perfection, and Talarand, Sky Summoner. Each of them give us a token, and Docent of Perfection, if we get enough wizards, flips over and pumps our other wizards, but he's mostly in the deck to give us more creature tokens. We're then playing Metallurgic Summoning, which is awesome. It gives us super huge tokens, and late game we can sacrifice it to return all of our instants and sorceries back to our hand, and we're going to be going over some of those later. We're then playing Saheeli Sublime Artificer, which every time we cast an uncreature spell is going to give us a servo. She does have some loyalty abilities, but we're mostly focused on the token maker. We're then playing the Locust God, which doesn't necessarily give us tokens for casting spells, but we do have a lot of ways of drawing in this deck, so we will be making a lot of Locusts. We're then playing Twilight Drover, which initially doesn't make us any tokens, but Twilight Drover rewards us for putting tokens into play, and we can dump mana into him to start making more tokens. Now, if you have the budget for this one, I would definitely include it. It's Monastery Mentor, and I would cut one of the instants of sorceries later that is a one-time effect that makes tokens, but this card is definitely worth putting in the deck if you have the budget for it. Every time you cast a non creature spell he's going to make a monk with prowess and he has prowess himself and all of those monks that you're going to make are get are going to get bigger and bigger the more spells that you cast and if you can give it double strike late game with akeem this can win you the game so if we can just stick one to two of these token producing permanents we're going to be in an awesome shape this deck isn't super competitive it definitely requires a very large board state to win but it, it is very strong and it can win out of nowhere now, let's go over the many instants and sorceries that we're running that can make several tokens in one turn if we have enough mana and we have the cards in our hand. Hordling Outburst is going to make us three goblin tokens. Sram's Expertise is also going to make us three colorless servo artifact creature tokens, and we can cast another spell from our hand with, that costs three or less without paying its mana cost. Battle Screech is going to make us two birds, and its flashback cost is super easy. Only having to tap three untapped white creatures to flash it back, it already makes us two of the three creatures right then and there, so that's a super good card. And then Spectral Procession for three mana is going to put three creatures into play, which is super efficient. Midnight Haunting, a little bit less efficient, but the instant speed is super helpful. 
Migratory Root is a little over costed, but it does have basic land cycling if we're in a pinch, and it's super useful in our graveyard with some of our finishers later on. Triplicate Spirits is sometimes free in our deck, and it puts three 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying into play. We're then playing Benevolent Offering, which is a little political, but it's a super unique card, and I love to see it in this deck. At instant speed, we can choose an opponent. You and that player each put three 1-1 one, one white spirit tokens with flying onto the battlefield. We then choose an opponent, and we gain two life for each creature we control, and that player gains two life for each creature that they control. So ideally, we're going to be benefiting more off of Benevolent Offering than either of the two opponents. We're then playing Martial Coup, which serves double purpose in this deck, being a huge token maker and a board wipe. And then Increasing Devotion, is super efficient for five mana making five tokens and with its flashback cost we can make 10 tokens. We're then playing deploy to the front which is super good if we control the most creatures but can also be super good if an opponent controls more creatures than we do. We're then playing secure the wastes which is a super awesome token maker being at instant speed. If we know our opponents are going to have a super huge turn we want to hold up some interaction they end up not doing that we can dump all of the mana into secure the waste and make a ton of soldiers. Now let's go over the ways we have of refilling our hand and churning through our deck. Skull Clamp is probably one of the best card draw engines we have in our deck. Being able to clamp one of our tokens, killing it and drawing two cards, super valuable. Then we have Idol of Oblivion, which basically with how many token makers we have, it is very easy for us to draw a card every turn with this. Then Reconnaissance Mission and Bident of Thassa are basically the same card in this deck. Each time one of our creatures deals combat damage to an opponent, we're going to draw a card. A lot of the tokens that we make in this deck have flying or some type of evasion, so they're going to be getting through. Then we have Impulse, Brainstorm, Frantic Search, and Thrill of Possibility. These are just your typical card draw spells in blue and red. Impulse being instant speed, getting four cards deep into our library. Brainstorm, instant speed, super cheap, gets us three cards deep into our library. Frantic Search, I consider basically a free draw spell as we untap the lands that we have to spend for it. Thrill of Possibility, instant speed, discard a card, draw two cards, super useful, especially with some of our late game finishers. And then we have Mentor of the Meek, which can turn our tokens into card draw if we have extra mana open. Now let's go over the ways we have of pumping our tokens up and making them a little bit more of a threat. We have Intangible Virtue, Angel of Invention, Spear of Heliod, Dictate of Heliod, and Force of Virtue. Each of these are super great Anthem effects in our deck and increase the efficiency and value of our token makers because if you stack on to each of our instants and sorceries, make a 1-1 token or a 2-2 token, that's really good. But if we have these Anthems out, we're tacking on to those same instants and sorceries, make a 4-4 four four or a 6-6 six six or a 3-3. Three three. That's a ton of value. And Angel of Invention is super cool because when she comes into play, we can either make her a little bigger or she comes with two tokens with that fabricate ability. We're then playing Cathar's Crusade, which can get out of hand really quick. And I hesitate of putting that in the win con section because I anticipate that this enchantment will probably be removed on site. But it says every time a creature comes into play, we get a put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature we control. That will get out of hand super fast. Now let's go over the ways we have of protecting our board from the inevitable board wipes. So we want to really reserve these next couple of cards just for that. We have Negate, Disdainful Stroke, Counterspell, and Dovin's Veto. Now for the most part, these are going to counter most of the board wipes, and we really want to hold on to those for those board wipes. But we have some other ways of interacting with what our opponent's doing with some kill spells and some board wipes. We've got Swords to Plowshares with instant speed can deal with basically any creature, Reality Shift, instant speed, exiles a creature, and Generous Gift, which is basically the beast within in white, destroys any permanent on the battlefield, and that controller gets a 3-3 elephant for the trouble. We're then running Cleansing Nova and Hour of Reckoning as our board wipes. Hour of Reckoning can be basically a one-sided board wipe in this deck, destroying everything but our tokens, and Cleansing Nova has that flexibility of blowing up the artifacts and enchantments if that's an issue, but most of the time we're probably going to want to blow up all the creatures. Now, let's go over those big flashy spells that can quite possibly win us the game that I was talking about earlier. We've got Clone Legion, which is very expensive, but the payoff is huge. For a whopping 7 blue blue, we get a sorcery that says for each creature target player controls, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Now, if our board state is already very threatening, this is kind of just a win more card, but can close out some games. A lot of times, we're probably going to want to choose an opponent that's got some super huge creatures. 
Sounds obvious, but it's super strong. We've then got Rise from the Tides, which is also very expensive. For five and a blue, we get a sorcery that says create a tapped 2-2 black zombie creature token for each instant and sorcery card in our graveyard. We're playing a grand total of 32 instants and sorceries, so the ceiling for that is huge. Next up, we got Jeskai Ascendancy, which is more of a low-key win con, but with the right setup, if we cast enough spells in one turn, this can definitely do it. It's an enchantment that costs Jeskai, and it says whenever you cast a non-creature spell, creatures you control get plus one plus one until end of turn untap those creatures and then whenever you cast a non-creature spell you may draw a card and if you do discard a card so it's got a lot packed into it but i'm counting it as a win con we're then playing storm herd which is a ridiculously costing spell and it definitely is worth the cost for eight white white you create x one one white pegasus creature tokens with flying where x is your life total now i'm going to before talking too much about this card i'm going to lump it in with the next card which is empty the warrens this is a super hilarious card that costs three and a red it says create two one one red goblin creature tokens and storm when you cast a spell copy it for each spell cast before it this turn now the reason why i've lumped storm herd and empty the warrens together is they're kind of two sides of the same card both of them have a condition that casting them from our hand is going to be a little bit difficult with storm herd costing a million mana basically and empty the warrens also costing a lot of mana to get a lot off of it we've got another card that if we can get it will probably win us the game and that card is mizzix mastery it's a sorcery that costs three and a red and it reads exile target card that's an instant or sorcery from your graveyard for each card exile this way copy it and you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost you then have to exile mizzix mastery however it has an overload cost that costs five red 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 and it says you may cast this spell for its overload cost if you do change its text by replacing all instances of target with each so that means if we pay eight mana we can cast every single instant and sorcery in our graveyard so if we've used our jeskai ascendancy or we've have other ways of discarding these cards into our graveyard with some of the other effects throughout our deck or just throughout the game cards get discarded and then late game we just drop mizzix mastery that will probably win us the game on the spot so what we want to do is we want to layer all of the instants and sorceries to where Empty the Warrens will be the last one cast. And since Mizzix Mastery lets us cast those spells from our graveyard as spells, Empty the Warrens Storm ability will track all those spells cast before it and we will make a million tokens. Another thing about this deck is if Akeem the Swarming Wind isn't necessarily your cup of tea, this deck works super well with Kaikar as the commander as well. So you can just slap Kaikar in there and put Akeem back in the 99 or maybe just take him out and the deck will work super well. But if you guys are interested of seeing a deck dedicated to Kaikar specifically, I'd be more than happy of building that deck if there's some interest there. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, this deck was not built with a super competitive meta in mind. I just think that this is a super fun deck and can be played in a variety of metas and is super flexible and looks like a lot of fun. And if you have the budget, there are certainly some cards that you might want to add in that would tune the deck up. First off, we've got Anointed Procession, which is an amazing enchantment that has spiked up recently and I'm super sad about it. It's basically parallel lives in white. Whenever you make a token, you make twice that many. There's also Elspeth's Sun Champion, which is a house of a planeswalker in this deck. Her plus one makes three 1-1 one, one soldier tokens. All of her abilities are super relevant at all stages in the game. Her minus two wipes away all the super powerful creatures your opponents have. It might hit some of yours, but ideally it's gonna kill your opponent's creatures. And then her ultimate gives all of your tokens plus two plus two and flying. Smothering Tithe is another card that you might want to put in this deck as it gives you a ton of treasures, taxes your opponents that they don't want you to get those treasures, and you can dump that mana in Mizzix Mastery late game or into maybe if you're trying to cast your Storm Herd. There's a lot of things that you can do with that mana. And then Elish Norn is an amazing card in this deck, giving all your creatures plus two plus two and all your opponent's creatures minus two minus two. She takes over games just by herself. And with that, this episode is coming to an end. Thank you guys so much for sticking around this long. I really, we really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. If you have any suggestions of what you would put into this deck or maybe cards that you'd take out or maybe some other ideas on how to build a Keem, definitely let us know in the comment section. We'll try and respond, let you know what we think. And if there are any specific commanders from Commander 20 or Ikoria or just other commanders in general that you'd like to see us build, let us know and we'll, we'll try our best to do so. Again, just another reminder, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, please do so so you don't miss our future videos, and we super appreciate the support. Thank you guys so much, and I hope you have an excellent day.